So, in this video, I am going to compare the Intel's Core i5-6600, the newest Skylake processor and compare it with an year old Haswell E Extreme Tradition processor i7-5960X. Uh, we will start with the number of cores and clock frequencies. I have also included this i7-5820K because it makes more sense from the price to performance ratio. So, let us start with the number of cores and uh, threads and base clock, clock frequencies. The Skylake is a quad core processor and the hyper threading is disabled. And we do not know why Intel disables it, but because in theory it is not a faulty circuit unlike, uh, unlike the 4 core versus 2 core. In dual core you can essentially if the 4 core is not working you can disable 2 cores and make it a 2 core, but there is no reason why it is doing that, but that it is what it is. We have a 4 cores and hyper threading is disabled which means that we get 15 percent lower performance compared to what it would have been had the hyper thread been that in threading been enabled. The Haswell E has 8 cores and that by itself doubles the performance uh, and the hyper threading adds another 15 percent to this performance, but it has a lower clock frequency 3.3 gigahertz versus 3 gigahertz and a lower the turbo clock frequency which is the clock frequency the processor increases based upon the demand. And the reason to lower the frequency has to do with the more uh, thermal requirement with 8 processor running at 3 gigahertz the thermal requirement keeps going up and you reach a point where it cannot heat anymore. Uh, Skylake, uh, Skylake runs cool at 65 watts. The third processor we were uh, considering was 5820K is 6 cores and 12 hyper threads compared to 8 and 16 in 5960X. So, with this information uh, one more thing is the cache memory is 6 MB versus 20 MB in Haswell E and 15 MB in 5 in Haswell E 5820K. So, let us take a look at the pass mark score. We have i5-660K at 7849 and the 57-5960X is 16000 almost double the 6600K. Uh, uh, sorry, this is about 6600K and we are looking at 660 pass mark which should also be not much lower it is 73282 which is much lower than half the performance of extreme addition. And then we have 5820Q at a decent 13000 pass mark so, that brings us to the price of these 3 processors $224 dollars versus 1059 dollars. So, that may look to you a bit too high. So, even though it is double the performance you expect to pay 225 multiplied by 2 or 450 dollar or 500 or 600 dollars would have been reasonable for the extreme addition, but a thousand may look a little too high for you and for this reason you have another option of going with 5820K which is not too high it is a decent sweet spot. 396 dollars makes it affordable affordable for most of us. Of course, you will also need a, a motherboard, a graphics card and of course, SSD drive and so on and so forth power supply to make it the whole system, but that gives you a comparative um, figure of where you stand. Maybe you can start with some lower end processor and keep everything ready and just when you get a deal or something like that you can just replace that processor. If you are looking at a sky lag and the same thing you can do with the Haswell E processor they work on a different motherboard sky lag and Haswell E they have different sockets you will need a different uh, motherboard for these one of them is has a socket of LGA 1151 other one is 2011 V3 couple of other things we have a quad channel memory in Haswell E and Skylake has two memory channels 
This essentially doubles the max memory bandwidth from 34 gigabyte per second to 68 gigabyte per second. The Haswell E also comes without the integrated graphics. So, you will have to buy another graphics card to make it run. I hope this helps you. Thanks for taking a look.